वेलकम अगेन विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद द एन सी आर टी क्लास टेंथ इकोनॉमिक्स द फर्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज डेवलपमेंट नाउ बिफोर वी मूव ऑन टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग डेवलपमेंट लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट वेन वी से ग्रोथ वी टॉक अबाउट इंक्रीज इन द नेट और द रियल नेशनल इनकम एंड द नेशनल आउटपुट हाउ एवर वेन वी टॉक अबाउट डेवलपमेंट इट्स नॉट मियरली अ इंक्रीज इन द नेशनल इनकम इट इज मच बियॉन्ड the increase in the national income so it talks about the quality of life the living standards that could be measured in terms of the literacy levels the per capita income and the health care now in simple words if i say uh, about development we can say development is a kind of directional growth that means uh, we are growing but we are providing a direction to the growth that means our aim for this growth is providing literacy to all providing good health care facilities providing a kind of basic medical facility improving the life expectancy of the residents so all those are kind of directional growth so development if includes a kind of directional growth we say the development is useful or beneficial now since generations we have been talking about present is a key to past so based on the past developments or the past growth that has taken place the present status or the present idea of development could be demarcated so let's talk about the world map here so these are the american continents and then you have africa you have india and so on so what is happening here if we look on to the past trends we can say africa was among the less developed nations in comparison to america that means that past has been a trend setter for the present growth or the present development in the region so if there is a kind of higher development in this region this region would prosper much better much better as compared to the prosperity in africa because you had a kind of better start or a kind of good start that was available for this region so that explains how present is governed by the past again for different people there are different development goals that are set up that means what is development for me might not be development for you or what is development for you might not be development for me so let's say you have a kind of landless labor for a landless labor what would be development development would be earning more wages or getting more days of work or a very higher thought would be getting a kind of permanent employment so that is a kind of development from the perspective of a landless labor from the perspective of a prosperous farmer could be gaining more income bringing in more technology into the farms getting in more prosperity for an urban unemployed youth the development could be getting a good decent employment for a tribal the development goal could be a pro, uh, getting good education having a rising socio economic strata getting equality or getting land ownership again for a girl child the development could be uh, in in terms of equal opportunity education at parity or in terms of better freedom or more higher freedom levels so there are different development assessments or development levels or development goals that a person has so we cannot say what is development for me would definitely be a development for you so every person has a kind of different development levels or development goals that he or she wants to achieve now development as we said is a mixed goal that means improving the income levels getting more freedom having better treatment or social equality social inclusion then you have security respect for others and a kind of safe environment to move around so these are some of the basic or i could say mixed goals that talk about or define development when we talk about development of a nation or national development our basic idea is to improve the life of the citizens of that nation so what can we talk about then we can talk about the net gdp of the state uh, the nation we can talk about parameters like literacy rate parameters like health care health index life expectancy 
socio economic development so these are some of the parameters that we would consider when we talk about national development along with this we will focus on the personal income or the growth in income removal of poverty satisfaction of the social economic needs and attainment of a democratic and participatory society so these are some of the national goals or the national development goals that are being defined however when we come on comparison of between the nations and the state uh, for comparison it's important to note we always compare the averages we do not compare the totals because when we are comparing the total income that total income would vary based on the number of people living in that country so rather than comparing the total income what we need to compare is the average income so when we talk about average income or per capita income that's the total income divided by the total number of the residents or the total population now the world bank report world development report 2006 said the per capita income of more than 4 lakhs 53 thousands per person uh, per annum and above in 2004 were considered as rich countries if the income level is less than 37000 we called it poor income countries so india falled into the category of uh, fell into the category of the uh, low income countries or poor income countries because in 2004 the per capita income for india was merely 28000 per annum now again if we talk about rich countries we exclude the middle east and certain small countries that are developed countries because uh, we are excluding the countries of middle east in this because uh, there are kind of uh, uh, rich countries but we won't consider them as kind of developed nations so this is a kind of basic idea to help us understand at what parameters we can compare the development levels so we can definitely compare the development levels at the level of per capita income but not at a level of absolute income or the total income so that's the first thing to note now besides income what are other parameters that are important so let's move back to india and let's take an example of kerala and punjab now punjab has a much higher per capita income as compared to kerala however if we talk in terms of development we would say kerala is much ahead of punjab now why so because when we are talking about development per se we are not just merely including the national income uh, the per capita income as we did in the case of growth so if we talk about growth we can say punjab has a higher growth as compared to kerala kerala but if we talk in terms of development we are including other parameters like infant mortality rate literacy rate and the net attendance ratio now infant mortality rate is the number of children that are not able to survive below the age of 1 years per 1000 live births so if the infant mortality rate is higher the region is not doing well in terms of development again literacy rate if the literacy literacy we define it as at a, as a person who can read and write of an age group of about 7 years now if we say the literacy rate is higher that means there is higher development the next is the net attendance ratio so children in the age group of 6 to 10 years if they are attending more school as compared to the other region that means the region a is doing well in terms of net attendance ratio and has a higher development again public facilities is uh, again an important parameter because it's not just the money in your pockets it's how the a uh, community is being developed so if there is a kind of pollution free environment unadulterated medicines more of uh, sewerage and sanitation facilities that are available so all these public facilities if they are better off that means the overall development of the region is much better so these are some of the parameters that we look into while considering the development but these are not included when we talk about growth again i mentioned the same point so you have uh, again for countries which are uh, working for poverty elevation like a country like india you have a kind of public distribution system we have already talked about this in class 9 
so proper functioning of public distribution system is again an important parameter as we talked about the example of punjab and kerala so punjab definitely has higher per capita income but it is lower in terms or i could say it has much higher infant mortality rate as compared to kerala so we cannot calculate uh, this based on the Uh, development of the region so development of the region would be higher or the standards of the living for kerala would be higher than that of punjab again undernourishment is one of the factors that is considered when we talk about development so undernourishment is measured by the body mass index that's the weight of the person divided by the height of the person now the human in uh, human development index has been given by undp uh, it was initially <coughs> recommended by Pakistani economist that is Mahbub ul Haq uh, in collaboration with Amrit Sen it focused on three basic parameters that is life expectancy education and per capita income in 2010 inequality adjusted hdi was given which was known as ihdi and it again focused on three standards the first is the decent standard of living that is the gross national income per capita or we can say purchasing power parity in terms of us dollars then you have the education index that talks about the mean years of schooling and the expected years of schooling so that's the education index and finally for a long and healthy life the life expectancy at birth is again important parameter now what is done under hdi we take a geometric mean of all these three parameters that's life expectancy education and income index so a geometric mean of all these three indicators are taken to calculate the human development index and finally we'll talk about the sustainability of development when it comes to sustainability of development we say we have not inherited the world from our forefathers rather we have borrowed it from our children that means we need to preserve or conserve the resources so that they can be used for the future generations to come and that is all we uh, that is what we talk about when we discuss the concept of sustainable development or sustainability of development now for example ground water is a one of our renewable resources and this can be replenished by nature however there are certain resources which are available in fixed stock which are non renewable in nature and these cannot be replenished so once depleted they are gone so we need to have uh, for example oil petroleum so we need to have a kind of uh, generous use or uh, intelligent use for those resources which are non renewable because we have a fixed stock for those and this is what we talk under the sustainability of development so with this we cover the first chapter of economics we'll be covering the further chapters in the next classes have a good day